Ennis, can you confirm if you can do the live presentation so that we just have you share your screen and start the presentation? Yes, I can. Okay, thanks. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience, everyone. I'm, I'm, I'm a different computer again, and so I just realized that my VOC isn't yet configured to, to sort of like send the audio output to, um, to Google Meet, but that's fine. So I'm just going to quickly introduce uh, Ennis as he's sharing the screen. Um, uh, I know the bio was, was, uh, was shared with, uh, uh, it was shared by the meeting. So for those of you that had the chance to look at, um, to look at the, um, the message, you'd have noticed that there's detailed information about Ennis. But, but Ennis is, um, so thank you very much, Ennis, by the way. Ennis is currently uh, uh, a registrar at uh, the Invest Teaching Hospital's Adult Hospital. Um, at the same time, he's actually pursuing a specialist uh, training program in radiology. So it's called, uh, it's short, short form for a STP program, they call it. Um, I believe this was a brainchild. I could be wrong here, Ines, but I think this was a brainchild of uh, uh, Dr. Chirufia, is it? The, Correct. The, yeah. Uh, so interesting thing. I'm not quite sure how this is going to play out, seeing as... Uh, Usually, when you have you know like a new regime come in, things sort of like change. But anyway, that's besides the point. Um, but at the same time, uh, interestingly enough, Ernest actually happens to be. Um, he, he actually works for the uh, for the is it Zambia Army? They call it. Yes. yes. Um, so yeah. So previously, though, before joining the army, he he worked as a junior resident uh, medical officer. Um, after which, obviously, went to the Zambia Military Academy um, and worked for two years at Tagagan Camp Hospital in Indola. He was then uh, uh, is it posted to the no Northern Command Military Hospital and was there between 2017 and 2018. He was sent to the Central African Republic um, under the Zambian UN peacekeeping mission, I believe. Uh, so... Uh, in addition, he's also worked at the Rwanda's level two hospital uh, in the mission area. So, Enes, uh, thank you so much again. Um, and so Enes is going to give a talk titled Enterprise Medical Imaging in the Global South Challenges and Opportunities. And incidentally, um, I have a bit of a vested interest in this. Uh, Enes and I, together with another colleague from uh, the University of Pretoria, Zola, I'm not sure if he's, he's going to be uh, available to give a talk centered around... Uh, um, his research interests maybe after next week or something. But we are, we've been, you know, working on, on, on this project, this large-scale project, and there are quite a number of things involved here, but, but we thought it would be interesting to, to have uh, Enes give a talk centered around this con concept paper, which was uh, presented at uh, this year's IST Africa conference. Um, I want to stress up front that part of the reason we're doing this is that... Um, um, we anticipate, right, that uh, at some point next year we might have, uh, you know, other projects that might be spun off from from what Ennis is going to talk about. So we are hoping that maybe we can we can have some of you um, uh, maybe express interest in this particular area. Um, I, I've always thought that, unfortunately, I've always thought that uh, there's there's very little focus. If you look at uh, IT, for instance, very few people would be interested in in working in these, um, these sort of areas or domains. So if you look at education and health, for instance, very few people would be doing anything exciting here. Right? People mostly gravitate towards uh, uh, finance, right? Because that's where the money is. Uh, but our hope is that, you know, maybe we can try and recruit some, some students as we are pursuing this, this master's program so that we can, we can try and, uh, and, and, and change the way things are done, in this case, in the health sector. So, Ernest, uh, again, thank you very much, and um, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks. Uh, thank you so much, Lighton, and uh, I'm grateful for this invitation. Um, and also great to meet uh, new people who are actually attending this, uh, this meeting. Just a uh, way of confirming uh, that you are able to see my screen. Oh, yes, we are. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I think the Lighton has pretty done all that there is to do in terms of introduction of who I am, what I do, and uh, what this presentation is all about. So uh, this is uh, the work that we have been doing for the past few months, and uh, 
uh, it culminated into us uh, writing this paper called Enterprise Medical Imaging in the Global South, Challenges and Opportunities. And just to give you an insight of what medical imaging is, so medical imaging is a, a broader term under which we find what is popularly known as radiology. So radiology is a medical specialty that is um, encompasses the use of medical imaging or clinical imaging uh, to diagnose and treat some of the medical conditions. Uh, in a hospital setup, you find that uh, radiology is a, an independent department and usually it doesn't really register its own clients. So radiology uh, plays a very pivotal role in the uh, hospital across all generic uh, medical disciplines. And this ranges from pediatrics, uh, uh, internal medicine, surgery, obstetrics and gynecology, physiotherapy, geriatrics, everything. And uh, what radiology does is that it, it registers patients that have been seen by physicians from uh, any um, medical discipline where they request for image, uh, imaging examination. So when the patient comes to the Department of Radiology, they are registered <clears throat> and they are scanned using one of the many different uh, imaging modalities that we have, depending on what the patient's condition is, what the diagnosis from the physician is, and what the possible outcome of uh, management for the patient is. So the patient will be scanned by one of the machines in the department. The images that are acquired during the scanning are stored somewhere. Um, <clears throat> the stored images are then accessed by the radiologist who is one of the many stakeholders involved in the process. The radiologist's job is to actually analyze the images, interpret the findings, and prepare a detailed report, which is then sent back to the physician. The physician will then rely upon this uh, diagnosis from radiology to base his treatment for the patient, either to change it completely or to make it conform to the findings in the radiology report such as what has been depicted in this workflow here is how a modern radiological department operates. But um, in the global south, there are two main challenges that are associated with these processes. And these include a critical shortage of the radiologists to analyze and interpret the images. And also it has been noted as that there is little use or limited use of modern medical imaging practices. And so our work focused on actually trying to identify some potential solutions to do with this limited use of modern medical imaging practices. And this is through the implementation of enterprise medical imaging. And so this is how the enterprise medical imaging, which was the heading for our paper, comes into the formula. We identified that while there are many uh, possible solutions that can be potentially tried to mitigate the critical shortage of radiologists, and probably we can say that uh, in Zambia, the Ministry of Health is already doing that somehow. We wanted to take a different route to try and see how we can improve the efficiency of the radiological services by tackling the limited use of medical uh, imaging practices. Now, enterprise medical imaging is a concept that involves techniques and workflows for acquiring, indexing, managing, storing, and analyzing the medical images that are acquired. So in our work, we had two objectives. Firstly, it was to highlight these challenges that adversely affect the effective interpretation 
of medical images, as well as to explore the opportunities that are associated with implementation and adoption of enterprise imaging strategies in order to enhance the interpretation of medical images in Zambia and in the global south at large. In our study, we used a mixed method approach. We picked uh, the University of Hospitals Department of Radiology as a, a, a case study, and we also carried out a meta-analysis on literature to do with the enterprise medical imaging. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, specifically for the case study, we carried out the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats sort analysis, where we looked at uh, records and combined with personal observations. I have been working in the Department of Radiology at UTH uh, for the past, I think this is my fourth year and have gained quite a good insight of some of the processes and procedures that um, are taking place. In the outcomes from our study, we actually noted that the latest information that the Ministry of Health has shows that 2,815 health facilities are registered under uh, Minister of Health in Zambia. <clears throat> Most of them are actually owned by the uh, government of the Republic of Zambia and ran, ran through the Minister of Health. And we found that uh, we also have other health facilities that are owned by the Defence Forces and uh, non-governmental organisations or non-profit making organisations as well as the private sector. But our work um, is really to focus on the public health facilities. Out of the 2,815 facilities, 151 are classified as hospitals. And these hospitals are further categorized as level one, level two, and level three, depending on the bed capacity, equipment, and the staff establishment, and so on and so forth. The majority still of these um, hospitals are owned by the government. Now, you might be surprised to note that out of all these facilities that we have in Zambia, as of the year 2020, we've only had nine trained radiologists practicing in the public health sector. You will also be interested to note that according to the 2010 uh, census of population and housing, Zambia recorded a population of about 18 million, and 70% of this population depends on public health services. So the nine radiologists are against about 12,600, uh, pardon me, about 12 million 600,000 uh, people in Zambia. But these nine radiologists are only distributed along the line of rail specifically in only about three provinces out of the 10 that we have in the country. Um, in our case study at UTH, we noted a number of uh, workflow challenges in the process of acquisition, in fact, requisition of the medical imaging examinations all the way through to um, preparation and dispatch of detailed reports bearing the diagnosis uh, from the radiological imaging. Some of the workflow challenges that we documented in this, uh, in our work include, first of all, that there is no radiology information system and there's no hospital information system in place, which are important in the management of uh, these processes. Uh, this entails that there is inadequate preparation of the requisition, requisition forms for the imaging examination. We find that there is repetitive entries of patient details at every other step during the process. We find that uh, reports that have been finalized still are piled up and remain uncollected in the department. 
And these are reports that are supposed to influence the treatment of the patient. In short, what you are saying is that you are withholding salient and important information that the physician needs to know in order to optimally manage the patient. And then we also note that there's tedious, you know, um, the, the process of preparation of uh, annual returns in terms of number of examinations that are conducted in a year tends to be very, very difficult because the processes are manual. Secondly, there is um, no picture archiving and communication system in place. A picture archiving and communication system is a very big entity when it comes to operations of the radiology department. So there being no PAC system in place means that there's no systematic storage of the images that are generated and the reports that are prepared by the radiologists. We find that most of the viewing of the images is manual reports are typed and written manually. We find that um, the patient is registered multiple times, as many times as the patient returns to the department for different uh, imaging requirements. It is very important, you may note in radiology that if I take images of a patient today and document my findings, the next time that the patient comes back for another examination, I need to compare with what I saw or what I found in the previous examination for me to be able to determine whether this condition is progressing, has remained static, or has res indeed resolved. So without a picture archiving <clears throat> and communication system, I'm unable to store the images and I'm unable to refer back to previous reports and images. This is very crucial in radiology. And then we also uh, noted that, um, excuse me, we also noted that um, some of the challenges that we find at uh, the institution of UTH is that we still have old machines that are not in conformity with the DICOM standard, which is a requirement for <clears throat> a PAC system to operate. Some other you know, findings that we noted include the long report turnaround time. You will agree with me that time is of great importance when it comes to diagnosis of any health condition. Uh, obviously for timely you know, institution of the correct uh, treatment option for the patient. Now, the long report turnaround time uh, for UTH is, first of all, we have already noted that there are very few radiologists. And uh, <clears throat> specifically, there are only two trained radiologists that are stationed at the UTH. And then we have a heavy workload. For example, the, U, the UTH is a a conglomerate of the number of hospitals, about five or six independent hospitals, but co-located. And uh, all of these have uh, imaging examination needs. So patients are referred from all over the country. And so we tend to have a heavy volume of, of uh, images that are generated that require to be analyzed, interpreted, and uh, reported. Um, there's an example here of just try and give you a sense of how big some of these volumes of imaging examinations we are talking about can be. In 2019, we noted that there were a total of about 92,600 imaging examinations in various modalities, X-rays, CT scans, um, DEX and nuclear medicine, uh, ultrasound, and so on and forth and so on and so forth. And these 92,600 uh, imaging examinations were against only two trained radiologists for them to actually interpret and, uh, and give the reports. And so this gives you 
an idea of the volume of images that are generated yearly. Um, <clears throat> when we carried out the meta-analysis on enterprise medical imaging, we focused mainly on literature that was talking about uh, the challenges uh, of implementation of enterprise medical imaging. It all summed up to one major challenge, and this major challenge is that of trying to integrate the various clinical imaging disciplines into a unified enterprise imaging strategy. So the, in the concept of enterprise medical imaging, um, it has actually become imperative that imaging should not only uh, be restricted to diagnostic imaging where you want to find the diagnosis of a patient. So there are many other prongs that are associated with enterprise medical imaging. And we you find that uh, some of the imaging um, that takes place within in the Department of Pathology, the Department of uh, Ophthalmology or Eye Hospital, in the Department of uh, the, the part of the department which looks at uh, the gastrointestinal system of the patient, all these imaging, um, different in the form they are, are actually supposed to be unified in a in a single enterprise imaging strategy. Bringing these different clinical imaging aspects together has proved to be a challenge uh, in terms of implementation of uh, enterprise medical imaging. And this is simply because these different um, clinical imaging units, or should I say, have different workflows. Uh, secondly, the identification of the patients may differ because the image capturing equipment that is used differs. There are also differences in the qualities and standards of the images that are produced in the different units. And we find that there are also like um, issues to do with standard nomenclature that can cut across the different units uh, uh, in a standardized way. Other issues include medical legal and personal privacy concerns and use of mobile devices in some of the units. For example, in the skin clinic, they may use a, a, a cell phone to take an image of a pathology or a lesion or a, 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 a problem that is on the patient's skin. But these you know, cell phones use light in terms of uh, capturing of the image, different from what we use in the radiology department where we use x-rays, x-rays, for example. Uh, so they are to actually bring these different units together may actually prove uh, to be difficult. Now, that was general in terms of the um, challenges in implementing uh, enterprise medical imaging. The Global South, to which Zambia um, belongs has additional challenges and these challenges include the cost of procurement of such a strategy associated with the, the need for ongoing investment to maintain the strategy. We also have uh, challenges to do with the requirement for good information and communication technology which are supposed to support the system and which we currently do not have, for example, at UTH, and also the lack of training in the users for uh, enterprise medical imaging. Our SWOT analysis that we carried out uh, yielded the following. Under the strength, we noted that uh, quite all right, both the radiologists and the radiographers or most of the stakeholders that are involved in the processes of imaging at some point are well trained from reputable institutions and this is a strength that we have most of which actually are still are young ones and are exposed to information technology secondly the strength that we identified we was that even these smaller subunits where it's some sort of imaging takes place um, they are already 
established in their own rights, where they have well-established administrators who are running those small units. They already have and operate on standard operating procedures, even though the workflows may be manual, for example, in the regulatory department, these, the systematic existence of these workforce could actually be incorporated in an enterprise imaging centric ecosystem. And we also noted that they are quite um, fairly, fairly quite equipped in terms of machines, and uh, most of which are compatible with the DICOM machine uh, requirement. Then the other thing we noted and our strength is that there's already an ongoing mobilization of teleradiology equipment. Teleradiology uh, implies that there is transfer of images and reports from one place, one geolocation to another for the purposes of um, uh, sharing and interpretation. For example, uh, images can be shared from Chipata General Hospital to UTH because Chipata General Hospital does not have a radiologist, the images can actually be transmitted to <clears throat> the university teaching hospital where a radiologist is seated, can analyze the images and send back a report to Chipata General Hospital. This is an ongoing um, uh, program that is taking place. The weaknesses that we identified include um, the fact that these small subunits where imaging takes place in the department still uh, operate independently and have not been integrated into the mainstream clinical imaging. And we also noted that there is still continued use of old analog imaging modalities that uh, are not DICOM compatible. Some x-rays you will note they are still being printed on that black film which is an analog in a, in a cassette. Most of the mammograms, that is imaging of the breast for our female folk, but men as well, are still uh, old machines. And then we have uh, the witnesses where most of these other small subunits that do imaging use light for image capturing, contrary to what is used in radiology where we use rays such as uh, X-rays and um, gamma rays. Then we also noted that uh, there's poor serviceability of equipment where we have long and frequent down times for the machines. I'll give an example for the main CT scan machine at the University Teaching Hospital Adult uh, Hospital Department of Radiology. I think it has been down now for close to two years for what we have been told is a software problem. So the machine has not been running for that long. And then we don't have a good ICT infrastructure locally. Under the opportunities, we realized that we could take advantage of um, the rollout that is currently taking place in electronic health record system. And this is uh, a system under which the radiology information system, hospital information system could ride on the smart care electronic health record system for the country is still being rolled out, um, though at the, in its current form only, um, I think, accommodates um, to do with um, HIV programs. Uh, so we are yet to see the expansion to include other uh, services in, in the hospital. And uh, we also noted that um, uh, there is pre-existing uh, e-government services where the hospitals are actually uh, connected with the paid paid for internet. I think most of the health, health facilities and government departments are now connected. However, the connection has actually many, many challenges because the internet connection is unreliable. So even when we talk about uh, teleradiology, this could actually pose a challenge in terms of transmission of images and reports. The, what I also consider to be a very big threat uh, from this analysis is the fact that there's still uncertainty on whether there will be acceptability of unification of these small 
imaging subunits into a unified enterprise medical imaging. These are small departments, small as they may be, have been running for a long time with their own managers to, to actually have um, uh, a unified strategy where you have one board to oversee the running of such a strategy. We still do not understand how that can be uh, responded to. So that is also one of the threats that we identified. So uh, in conclusion, this is meant to be a short talk. Uh, I gave to you a SWOT analysis that we carried out, which highlighted the main challenges and opportunities uh, in implementing the successful enterprise imaging strategy. Uh, strategy. And this was actually the motivation for our work, especially in the identification that implementation of an AI strategy would act potentially solve the challenge of the limited use of modern medical imaging practices. We also uh, presented to you a meta-analysis that we conducted to consolidate information on the general and local challenges that are associated with the uh, implementation of enterprise uh, medical imaging. I should also be able to mention, I think Lighton has already spoken on this, on this that we are currently uh, currently carrying out a pilot study to fully understand the workflows in the radiology departments that are uh, currently obtaining at the invasive teaching hospitals and uh, other selected private as well as military hospitals. We expect that um, by the end of uh, this week we may actually be able to get an insight of how we could actually automate some of the workflows. In particular, we have in the pipeline uh, the plans to implement the parks and the risk uh, platforms at the university teaching hospitals. Other plans include uh, trying to uh, divert to the other challenge that we have, and that is that of uh, a, a shortage of radiologists where we could actually uh, ride on one of the other aspects of enterprise medical imaging, which is machine learning to try and implement some machine learning models that could actually uh, help in the interpretation of some of the medical images that are generated. In the future, or probably in the near future, so to say, we're also looking into the feasibility of exploration of automatic uh, generation of uh, radiological reports, because this is also where a lot of time is spent uh, in the preparation of uh, the reports. Having said that, I want to thank you. I think I'll end the presentation there. That is part of uh, the literature that we uh, looked at in, as we were carrying out our work. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, Ernest. I, I guess it's a, it's a good thing that we, we decided not to play back the pre-recording because I thought there are some other things that you you um, you actually focused a lot more on, especially that the IST Africa presentation was only limited to is it uh, ten to fifteen minutes or something. So thank you so much. It was wonderful. Um, not because I, I have a vested interest in the project, but but because I truly believe that um, that I th I think that what we've started doing right is is a good thing, right? Uh, I sleep better at night, personally, I'll be honest here, knowing that I'm, I'm contributing in my own small little way. But, but I, wanted to, I wanted to start off by, by just highlighting something that perhaps, uh, especially our colleagues in Rodin to 57 foot one may not have figured out. The fact that we deliberately decided to invite uh, Ernest so that he could talk about the broad landscape of the problem itself. Uh, I mean, everything to do with research starts with the problem, right? Um, and those of you that have been paying attention would have noticed that there's there's quite a number of problems that Ennis highlighted. Some of them, I, as, as a person who's been working in IT for almost 20 years now, would consider trivial, right? And I've, I've actually uh, had conversations with Ennis uh, telling him to say, I mean, this thing you talk about, about storage being an issue, is it, is, it's a trivial matter, right? We have... Uh, 
entities that have been set up specifically to help with that. So I'm referring to things like, uh, or entities, organizations like Infratel, for instance, and, and, um, and uh, is it Zamrin, for instance, right? But, but I think the, the main weakness um, I've come to learn myself personally is I, th I think that we, we, we are sort I could be wrong here. I mean, I'm, uh, don't quote me, or you can quote me, no problem. But we are a society I've always thought, which is not really altruistic, right? We don't, people rarely do, in this country, people rarely do things for free. You know, that's the reason why we, we know they are smart people. I mean, people that are enrolled, they, one of the reasons why you're enrolled into this master's program is because you're a smart person, right? <laughs> but, um, I mean, if we were to take a poll here to find out how many people would be willing to donate perhaps uh, a day's worth of their time every week to do something for free, it's, um, it's sort of like a foreign concept. But anyway, nonetheless, we, we hope that, um, that uh, you were able to pick out some really interesting things. I'll, I'll hold on my thoughts to some of the things that I want to, the things that are specific to maybe data mining and, you know, like research project and whatnot. I'll wait for people to ask questions. But, but I just wanted to again reiterate the fact that uh, some of these projects we're working on, we, we have people in the, in the meeting actually right now. I think I see Sarah and Gilbert. Um, they're going to be helping us with, um, with the process of digitizing and labeling um, you know, a data set which is supposed to feed into yet another study that we are doing to sort of like demonstrate the feasibility of using machine learning, for instance, for the semi-automated interpretation of medical images. Um, there are also some students. So Sarah and Gilbert are radiology students. Uh, Sarah, I think, is at Apex and Gilbert is at the Invest of Zambia. Uh, they, they're pursuing a radiography program. And then um, I'm working with a group of four students who are working towards designing and implementing a PAX platform as a basis, right, uh, for us to start capturing this data. Because before you can even do any of these fancy machine learning things, you need data. And we've mentioned this in 5741. There's no data right now, right? You can't do anything interesting or exciting up until, you know, you have this data. And so we're working towards, towards that. But I will invite questions now. We're expecting a lot of questions because I, I think this is interesting, something that affects all of us, I'm sure. Almost everyone in here has gone to the hospital and they've been told to say, go and get an X-ray or whatever. I know I've done that. So questions, please. The floor is open. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 Paul, please. Uh, thank you. Um, good evening, Dr. Zulu. Uh, I wanted to find out um, um, uh, from your background in... Uh, also being in the military. Uh, aren't there any learnings from um, uh, places like Minasoko, which I've seen, it seems to be um, a, steps ahead in terms of implementation of uh, what is uh, uh, being done in this research? I just want to find out if there are learnings that have been gotten from other institutions like Minasoko. <clears throat> Thank you so much for... Um... Yes, indeed, you are right, uh, you are correct. So uh, there are lessons to be learned because I think we can, I can safely say, as far as I know, um, Minor Soko, the new Minor Soko, now called Minor Soko Medical Center, happens to be the first uh, public institution to actually have a PAX system. And this PAX system is a, a local PAX system. It's not uh, in the cloud, so a, a local park system. And uh, <clears throat> for the past, I think, three weeks, I have actually been working from here at uh, Minor Soko Medical Center, and uh, I have realized it has its own limitations, and simply because uh, these are things that have actually been developed from outside, and they are brought here and lumped on us, there is a preferred way that we would want certain things to be organized. And so a few challenges still exist, but yes, there are lessons that can be learned because uh, I think Minor Soc right now boasts to be one of the public health facilities that has a PAX system. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for the uh, question. Any other questions? Oh yes, uh, Jaco. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor, for that uh, leverage. 
in a short but comprehensive uh, presentation. And thank you, Dr. Lighton, for bringing Dr. Zulu over. Um, a few things that I did notice, and maybe just going through, one of them is your process of data collection, which involved the metadata analysis. Maybe just to appreciate more, maybe, and record analysis, what sort of information are you looking in the data, metadata analysis and the record analysis, that's one. Then two, uh, I noted that the huge amount of data that you're dealing with of 92,000 records, and these are images. So the question I think Dr. Lighton also mentioned was storage. So how are you storing it? And also how are you retrieving it? Um, that probably is another challenge that you mentioned. Then the last one, I noted that one of the risks or challenges that you're having is regards to um, the issue of having a unified radiology department sort of across, which cuts across the country sort of to speak. One of the immediate thought that came to mind as an address to this was, why not just go private, having other organizations that would be interested in such to fund the project and so that it kickstarts like a private organization where people can come to uh, do the radiography and have a repository where you can retrieve such information. It, it's one of the things that I've appreciated a lot about the idea about the project is the fact that you, what you refer to, you go once and then the radiologist can refer to that information at a particular time in future, which I think is quite lacking, especially because they're all in ISO. Having yeah. uh, such would help. Thank you so much, though. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, I'll, I'll start answering the last question first. Um, and that is to do with the issue of <clears throat> going private. Um, I'm not so sure what you meant by that, but uh, when I was referring to these subunits and bringing them together, I actually referred to the university teaching hospitals, for example. As a hospital, university teaching hospital has different departments. We have the skin clinic, they take images. You have the pathology department where they look at the cells of a tumor. They also take images. We have the ophthalmology department, which is an eye hospital. They also take images of the eyes. So there are so many other different uh, clinical imaging units within one hospital. And the challenge that we're talking about is actually bringing these together into a unified strategy where each and every of this, one of these subunits deposit their images into one repository so that all these imaging examinations can actually be accessible to the multidisciplinary teams that are caring for the patients. So that if I am a radiologist sitting in my office and I'm looking at the CT scan for this patient, who has also done, um, say, a fundoscopy from uh, the eye hospital, I should be able to correlate what I'm seeing and what other imaging modalities have actually input in the, in the, in the system so that I have a, a holistic look at uh, the pathologies or the problems that the patient has. So that was um, uh, the unification I was talking about. Then I come to the question of uh, uh, retrieval of images and the numbers. And so when you look at that number, 92,000, 600, it's not a number that represents <clears throat> photos, say, let me give uh, uh, pictures of that are 92,000. That is not correct. Those are imaging examinations. Now, image, imaging examinations differ depending on the modality. If I talk about chest x-rays, for example, it will just be one photo, one image. But if you come to a CT scan, one examination means has, it has thousands of such images in one, okay? So that 92,000 uh, examinations, including x-rays, CT scans, nuclear medicine, ultrasound. So uh, this is huge, huge, huge volume of, you know, images that are generated. <clears throat> 
And at the moment, to answer your, your question specifically, there is no systematic way of storing these images. Some of them are deleted once uh, the images have been. So what happens is that when the image on the machine, at some point, the server in the machine will require that some space be free. Uh, what is being done is that those images are backed up on external hard drives. They are backed up on CDs. Some of them actually, unfortunately, are deleted permanently such that it is very, very difficult to actually retrieve those images for uh, what we call interval examination to see, like I said in the talk, whether there's any improvement in the, in the health condition that you're looking at. So there's no systematic way of storing or retrieving these images. Uh, individual members of staff have their own ways of storing these images. I have my own ways of how I store the images that I look at and the reports that I write. Uh, so there's no systematic way at the moment. Uh, your first question was to do, if you can remind me, uh, my, my apologies. What was your first question? And my first two questions was in the metadata, what are you really Great. looking at? Thank you. Great. So, so analysis. Data analysis, yes. So what we did, um, uh, is especially for the university teaching hospitals, what we did is we went to the annual returns that are pro uh, prepared by the chief radiographer. There is uh, um, a position called the, or an office called the chief radiographer. They keep records of how many examinations are done uh, a year. And these entries are done manually on sheets of paper. Um, and they aggregate the data. So they collect this information daily. How many x-rays have been done on today, 23rd? How many uh, DEXA examinations? How many ultrasounds have been done today? Tomorrow, after a week, they put the information together. After a month, they put the information together. And after a year, they aggregate that information. At the moment, there is scant information. And uh, maybe I should even give uh, some sort of heads up to Gilbert and Sarah that um, they are the people who will be digging for this information. Uh, there's also what is called the records department at UTH where they um, where they actually uh, try to enter the manual you know data into some sort of uh, an electronic copies. Uh, data is scanty. So the reason why we only presented the 2019 uh, analysis is because that's what we found to have been the complete information running through January to December. These other years, it's really quite a challenge to find information. And it's all because everything is done manually. Uh, registers are lost. You cannot trace them for you to collect information, which is why we need to have a regular information system for us to be able to be keeping such records. As regards the meta-analysis, we, we searched the literature uh, to actually, and I said that we focused on a literature that was talking about um, challenges in the implementation of uh, enterprise medical imaging. I hope that answers your questions. Uh, thank you so much, Doc, for providing clarity to the question that I asked. On the last one, which you started with, uh, thank you so much for providing the clarity. I was thinking that since this project was being done by uh, you under uh, the UTH, it had some components which can be commercialized. That was my thought. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so maybe... Uh, Jump in issue. also, Ines. Yes, oh, yeah, I'll wait for Ines first. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to talk about uh, the issue of commercialization. Uh, probably maybe the, hard, the hardware that could be there would be issues to do with um, uh, confidentiality of uh, the patient's information. Yeah, so, well, I think that is a, a good suggestion to really look into critically. Yeah, perhaps that could actually help. But, but, but also, I, I've always thought, and I think I may have implicitly mentioned this at the beginning, I mean, if you look at certain sectors like the health sector right 
when the moment you start talking about commercialization and bringing private organizations into the picture, um, is money, right? Uh, the public health sector in Zambia is funded by taxpayers. I, I think that one of the issues that would be there is um, the priority that would be yeah. uh, associated with this. And this is, this is part of the reason why, and we always joke about this with NS. We've been talking about this, by the way, with NS for a very long time, for almost, I think, three years. We, we started talking about this NS a long time ago, right? Mm -hmm. but, but we always joke to say we need to start making noise so that people listen, so that people appreciate you know, if, if you just write some paper about enterprise imaging and challenges and you publish it in, in the IST Africa 2022 conference proceedings, people won't appreciate that, right? They won't. But, but the moment you start dumbing things down and conveying this message at a level that at least policymakers and decision makers are able to understand, then perhaps people will start thinking long and hard about this, right? Um, so this is a starting point. Uh, again, tied to finances, I know most of you, well, some of you here are probably business owners. Um, I mean, how many of you would be willing to just jump onto this without compensation? I, I doubt it. If you have a, a company, one of the things you'd be interested in is profit, right? When you start talking about profit, here is where is the money coming from? Um, interestingly enough, I think we, we already had um, an entity reach out to us. Uh, I don't know if you got that email, NS, but they, they read our inception report. Yes, yes. Uh, the inception report is linked to, we, we have a little bit of funding, right, from the Directorate of Research and Graduate Studies at, at the UNSA. So given us a bit of money, it's the money we're using actually to, to do this pilot study. And so they reached out to us and they were claiming, or they are claiming, we're here to interact with them, they're claiming that they already have a solution for this. And my, immediate, my immediate reaction to that was, but we're talking about so many different things here. And this is a research project, right? You have, you have uh, if you look at your, your broad enterprise imaging landscape, right? Is a PACS platform. You know, you have the radiology information system. Um, you have, you know, the standardization or the interoperability associated with the different entities. So the image modalities, for instance, have you feed information to the, you know, PACS system. People like NS, the radiologists, uh, generate reports which have to find themselves in the, you know, risk. Uh, the referring physician needs to convey information to somebody like, like Ernest. Ernest has to send that information to the referring physician. You know, perhaps in some instances, the patient might want to have access to the information, right? Yeah. So, so, so many different things. Uh, and there is potential for commercialization, but the, the challenge here is uh, the direct benefits, right? If you were to come up with a solution like this, the question is, I mean, you know, how long would it take for you to... <laughs> To, to to actually make a profit uh, perhaps if you manage to get a little bit of funding from an external entity out there which is something we're working towards but i'm going to pause here again and unless if there are any responses especially people that are business owners in here or people that work for private software development firms i know chitalima is works for a software development firm and i don't know if he has any thoughts but if there are no thoughts then maybe we can jump on to christopher he has his hand up uh, Wilkins, we're going to pause, we're going to prioritize our colleagues in CSC 5741, and then we'll uh, probably reach out to you at the end. Um, uh, thank you, Doc. Um, uh, and thanks for, for that lovely presentation. I, I have two questions. Uh, the first one, uh, it's an observation um, that I made during the, the presentation. I didn't see any workflows um to do with some sort of feedback mechanism uh, in the current process in an event that is uh, misdiagnosis for example uh, uh concerning the images I, I didn't see any particular workflows um where you know you would sort of uh, make sure that uh, such diagnosis is uh, is is noted um and obviously it doesn't affect the uh, um, the output, uh, further output from um, from the system. So I, I I was not sure whether that is um, deliberate or it, it, it's because of the limitations of uh, um, the current way it has been implemented. Given that uh, I think you mentioned that uh, the machine learning component is is not there. So maybe if you could just uh, comment on that. Okay. Um, and then uh, the second one relates to. I'm not so sure whether it's uh, applicable in, in the 
in the current phase, I mean, in the current, um, uh, in the current way it has been implemented, the, 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 the second question I had was, uh, I'm not so sure what your thoughts are when it comes to the to the learning part. Um, Obviously, yes, there will be a function. Uh, it will be influenced by how much data that you collect. Um, but I see it in two parts. It's not just the volumes of the data in terms of the images, but also the source of those images from the perspective of um, the radiographers. So mm -hmm. we can have a, a situation where you are feeding this uh, system with, say, a million uh, images that are coming from one radiographer. Um, from a learning perspective, I'm, I'm thinking that that would be different. It would um, give different results than if those one million um, images were coming from maybe a hundred different uh, uh, radiographers. So um, how varied do you think um, the, the, you know, the source of the images uh, should be uh, for you to get the accurate uh, results that you want to get? I'm not so sure whether that question is for, for this stage or it would be much applicable when you bring in the, the, the machine learning component, I submit. Okay, uh, thank you so much. So probably I'll, I'll ask Lighton later on to come in on that question, especially on the path uh, of the question to do with the, um, the variability of the sources. But suffice to say that uh, the images that we're going to use have been um, sort of generated by different machines. UTH alone has two uh, digital imaging uh, X-rays. Uh, and just also maybe make mention here that we are going to start, when it comes to that uh, path for machine learning, we are starting with X-rays. We are restri restricting ourselves to chest X-rays, in fact. Uh, so what we're going to do is that uh, we'll collect chest X-rays and that's what we use for training. Uh, the chest x-rays have been, you know, produced by different radiographers. Um, even though the machines may be the same, but radiographers are different. And there is what we call technique in the way that these images are actually produced or are taken or are captured. So different radiographers um, may differ slightly in terms of the technique, um, so there will be a bit of that variation in terms of what we'll be feeding into um, uh, the training. But maybe as to how many of those and how variable they should be for them to uh, make, you know, like a good sense for training, maybe like we'll or chip in later for that. To answer the other question to do with communication. So the communication with the phys uh, physicians is, is two ways or let me say at two points. To initiate a radiological imaging examination to be performed, whether it is a CT scan, whether it is MRI, X-ray, ultrasound, it all begins with the physician. The physician has seen a patient and has a suspicion of what the diagnosis is. He wants to either confirm or dispel his suspicion. He will, he will write a request form. You send the patient accompanied by a request form to the radiology department to ask the radiology department to perform an imaging examination, interpret the findings and give it back to the physician. Um, I may not have built that, I mean, I mean, dealt much on that, but also just to suffi suffice to say that that communication has not been very good uh, between the physicians and um, the doctors. A number of reasons actually explain that. But um, just as an example, I'll give you, uh, you know, the problem of the request form. So you'll find that the request form that the patient has is a written document. So it's a form where the physician fills in the information regarding the demographics of the patient the clinical information about the patient and what is which examination is asking for. So we find that um, a lot of information is missing on the request forms. 
such that it becomes it's, it's quite incapacitating the radiologist may not get back to the requesting physician for more information about the case so we have had those challenges of inadequately filled in request forms and sort of they are for lack of a better word useless you know to the radiologist so sometimes you have times where the radiologist will actually just interpret the imaging blindly based on what he's able to see because there's not much information that is coming from um, the requesting physician then on the other end we have a communication between the radiologist and the physician where the radiologist is giving back his findings to the physician who requested for this examination so that um, it can actually influence how he treats the patient. Again, we've had serious problems. Initially, the way we used to communicate back was that we would send manually, you know, a porter, we call them a porter, to carry the completed reports and take back to the word where the request form was generated. And then we noticed that the challenge that was there is, uh, you know, you would go to that word and find that the patient has been transferred out of that word. So you are stuck with, a, you know, with a report. You have the report quite all right, but you cannot reach out to who is supposed to consume the information. Then we tried to say, okay, let us be, you know, calling the patients. We ask the patients to give their phone numbers so that once the report is ready, we call them. So again, many challenges exist. You find that uh, the one who is on the bedside today for the patient and they give their phone will not be there tomorrow. You will call that, uh, you know, the report for this patient is ready. The bedside that says, actually, I left the bedside. I'm in Kafue now. So there are so many other challenges and we still find that uh, we are not able to communicate effectively back to the physicians and we remain stuck with piles and piles of reports that have been collected, uh, that have been completed and yet remain uncollected. If we had a radiology information system, we would actually feed our report back into the system and whatever the physician is, will be able to open and view the report. Simple. I hope that answers your questions. Yeah, so if I can come in on the second part. By the way, Porter, I, Port, I think, is a fancy name that UTH has come up for messenger. We, we have those that, <laughs> we have those that owns as well, right? Yeah. And interestingly enough, I think a wonderful qu question from Christopher. I mean, if you're interested in this sort of area, that's a potential problem space that you can explore. Clearly, there's a problem, right? No feedback mechanism. I mean, well, we can argue to say, I mean, if we have the risk, um, you know, platform set up that could pot potentially solve that problem, but, but these feedback mechanisms are much more complex than just setting up the risk platform, right? So it's a back and forth, there's different entities involved, you know, you just heard Dennis mention that you have the patient, you know, I'm in curfew, you know, you have the referring physician, you have uh, the radiology, somebody like Ernest, you have the person that generates the image, right? The radiographer, right? So a couple of interesting things there. And it answer the question to do with, um, with uh, data sources. So it will give you an example of what we're currently working towards. So this idea of any mentioned that we are, we're going to be using a specific type of modality, right, x-rays. Uh, it turns out that our specific interest is in pneumonia. It is NS, is it? Correct. Yeah. So the, the thing with the data here is that uh, fortunately for us, right, people like NS, uh, so you mentioned that there is nine radiologists in Zambia, but the Ministry of uh, Health uh, set up this STP program where people like NS are being trained. So we have quite a number of people that actually interpret images right there at UTH and I don't know which other places. The plan, right, is we are using uh, the interpretations that have been done in the past as a basis to create this labeled data set. But unfortunately, right, this labeled data set is not... Um, yet well organized, which is why we have people like um, like Sarah and Gilbert who are going to come in and help us organize this data. So ultimately, we would have um, 
would have a situation where we have a comprehensive label data set that we can use as a basis to create these models, to train a model or something. Uh, in terms of, um, in, in terms of uh, the variability perhaps of, of these labels, usually, and we discuss this as part of evaluation, I believe, usually when you're dealing with uh, experts, there's a certain level of trust that you place in them. If you look at the system that is at UTH, NS has explained this. When an image comes to NS, for instance, and NS interprets it, the report that is supposed to go to the referring physician has to go to NS supervisor, who verifies that what NS has interpreted, and correct me if I'm wrong, NS here, but who verify that NS interpretation is actually correct. You know, so we can assume that the labels that we're going to use, right, are going to be, to a certain extent, very accurate, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but but there are other there, there are other approaches that are used in literature, right? So you can use consensus, for instance. So you you look at the same label, um, you have different people uh, interpret that, let's say the modality, for instance, and then you look at uh, how many uh, are correct, right? So out of three, if two of them are, are the same, then you say the two are correct. Um, and incidentally, we're also planning to uh, this is in the pipeline. If we do secure additional funding. We are planning to say we can build another comprehensive data set, right? Um, which would be potentially created by making use of people like uh, Sarah and Gilbert's colleagues, right? So you look at people that are being trained, you give multiple people the same image, ask them what they suspect this thing is, right? Is it TB or something? Is it pneumonia? And then you look at the majority or something. So consensus voting is called. Um, I don't know if that's very helpful, but I, I think it will probably become more clear once we have a discussion of uh, evaluation, which I think is next week if we have a class on Sunday. All right. Uh, there's another question. Thank you. I, I hope. Yeah. There's another question from Paul, I think. Y yes, thank you. I just wanted to understand um, uh, how uh, the, the distribution of the data in terms of uh, the storage locations. Is there an indication of... Uh, uh, where the data is actually stored. The storeroom. Um, that was a joke, uh, Ennis. Uh, sorry, Ennis, that's for you, I think. But I think it is a storeroom because <laughs> in one of the presentations, Ennis has an image, but I'll let yeah. him answer that question. <laughs> okay, yeah. So like like I mentioned, um, the data is actually backed up on CDs and uh, and here I'm talking about the, the UTH. The data is backed up on CDs. That is a, a digital images are backed up on CDs and um, and external hard drives. Uh, individuals like myself and other colleagues we also use our own hard drives and um, flash disks because some of the images are you know kept temporarily others who you know we keep i have a deliberate policy where i actually keep each and every image that i that i come across those that i actually analyze i keep all of them so i have my personal you know like uh, library where i keep the images um at uth there is a physical room actually called the library in the department where Powers and powers of these disks are being kept, uh, bearing uh, imaging examinations for different patients. Um, the hard drives are kept in the uh, chief radiographer's office, and um, maybe you may even want to know. You know I think the reason why we are talking about all this, just uh, I think last month, one of the hard drives was stolen, um, told by. Uh, some some intruder who came into the department uh, in the evenings because the department runs for four hours so there's an intruder who brought a patient and i think he laid his eyes on the hard drive which was lying there in the in the imaging room and made away with it so there are such risks you know so yeah that's where we back up the images external hard drives for digital um uh, flash drives and cds for analog images we still have them on the cassette films and in fact for these uh, only a few still exist in the department because most of them are given back to the patients and they go away with the, with 
the film cassette films. Yeah. Just maybe to follow up that, is there a plan to consolidate all that data? Yes. So I think in our work with Dr. Perry, we actually wanted to, <clears throat> to see how we can digitize and digitalize all the data that is in the library. But we'll start with the images that are already digital on X-ray, on, sorry, on CDs and on uh, flash drives and hard drives. Then we can move on to probably the images that need, first of all, to be converted from uh, analog films, then to digital form, then thereafter we can organize the images and see how we can present the information or the data in, in, sort, in, in a way that can actually facilitate ease of retrieval of, uh, of, of images when we are looking for them. Thank you. And to and to jump on to that question, I mean, so the, the seed the seed money funding that we got from DRGS, I mean, sadly, it's only enabled us to, you know, to recruit or hire two research assistants. Uh, so I keep mentioning or keep mentioning Jack, uh, uh, Gilbert and, and Sarah. Um, but, but we are hopeful that uh, if we do manage to secure additional funding, we can scale up. So the plan right now is we're just going to prioritize this digitization, digitalization process uh, we are starting off first with the medical images that are going to feed into the study to do with this uh, machine learning model that we are working towards. Um, and then if there's still time, because we don't know how, how quickly Sarah and Gilbert are going to work, but if, if we still have um, enough time to do more, then we can, we can go back. So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of data that is generated, you know, so Ernest keeps mentioning the word modality, right? Yeah. And is given examples, right? Just a few examples: uh, the X-rays, right? MRIs, ultrasound. Um, I don't know what scan. else is like CT scan. So you, you can imagine a place like UTH, I and mean, we're just talking about UTH here, right? There are other places where we'd want to get this information from. You know, why UTH, right? Why not? Uh, is it material level? I don't know which other hospital NS would potentially have. Um, Modality, but maybe Levy, why not oh, Levy, for instance? Levy right? and all the level yeah. one hospitals have some right. form of imaging services. Chilenge, Matero, yeah. it's level one, so, Chamama, they have. Yeah, so you can you can imagine, right, just the sheer scale, of just the digitization, digitization process. And I'm guessing you're thinking there, this has become an election now. Well, why, why do we have to think about Matero and Levy? Why not just UTH if we're interested in just, uh, let's say, if we're interested in training machine learning model? Well. In some instances, you might want to perform some sort of unsupervised machine learning operation, right? What sort of diseases or something, right, are associated with a place like Matero? You know, you might discover that maybe the prevalence of certain types of cancers is much more there, right? Perhaps for some unknown reason anyway, but you only be able to do that if you have that information ready available. Not there now, right? So you can't, you can't go back in time and try and do an analysis to say, uh, you know, what has been going wrong, you know? You understand what I mean here? So, so it's a lot of information we're talking about here, and um, we're just hoping that, we're hoping for the best in terms of additional funding. I think the noise NS is going to help, and we're already making noise. And by the way, something else that NS and I and Zola have been chatting about is this idea of maybe trying to see if we can work towards a, forming some sort of working group, right, where we pull, you know, expertise together, whoever is interested, right, and try and see how we can, we can, we can work on this. We, we tried, I think, was that beginning last year or before last year, we, we started engaging with the then uh, ICTA's president, it was Christopher Lalusha, it was, I believe. Um, he was concerned that uh, part of the issue Ennis addressed was storage, right? Yeah. So we are hoping that we can tap into we, we have expertise, we, ha we know we have organizations that can help, but my suspicion, I could be wrong here, my, my educated guess, not suspicion, is that uh, people just don't know. Think here, you go to UTH, right? you don't really care, what you just go there, you, they get an x-ray, you probably had no clue that this is what happens behind the scenes, right? You, you just, uh, you see that process as a black box, right? 
they go they tell you go and get an uh, go and take an x-ray or something uh, the report comes back it's a go back to the doctor you think it's easy right there's a lot of moving parts but um uh, I'm, I'm going to because people are asking questions i'm going to pause and ask uh, rebecca and then we'll go to jacob because jacob has already asked the question uh, rebecca please go ahead Look, thank you so much, Doc. Um, I hope I'm loud and clear. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, so for me, I, I'm just wondering, um, what is the time frame of your project? Um, because I'm looking at the challenges that you um, that you presented. For me, they look like a lot, and um, I think the answer is not just also in um, in digitalizing the images, but in certain processes themselves. I think there are so many flaws that are in the processes, according to how um, the doc explained how the, um, how information flows, I, cannot, I can see some flaws there. So are you also going to tackle in how the processes are carried out or are you just handling um, 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 the issue of digitalizing the images? Are you also going to deal with certain flaws in the processes, how things are done? Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Rebecca, yes. Um, so maybe let me begin by tackling the issue of the time frame. Uh, so you will notice that um, the current funding that we have is, you know, applicable to a period of one year, which is 12 months. And that's the limitation that we have. And so what we have decided to do is to, co to conduct a pilot study where we are piloting a number of problems that we have identified in all these processes and um, at the level of you know uh, piloting so that we can prepare the ground for further research as we go uh, beyond this one year that uh, the funding actually uh, cut us for and uh, right uh, the issue of uh, workflows is very much uh, alive in this project that we are doing so we are actually conducting you know uh, a survey based on the workflows to try and fully understand the workflows and we are kind of trying to compare it with the uh, institutions that are in the private sector how the workflows differ from in the public uh, health sector how do they differ uh, from the military or defense uh, force uh, run institutions which although they are also part of government they are sort of kind of in, independent and are better resourced, so to say. So we are actually making those comparisons within that survey to understand the, the workflows. So to kind of jump okay, on thank you what so much. Is, yeah, uh, thanks Rebecca for that wonderful question, by the way. Uh, and to jump on to, uh, to add on to what Enes just said, part of the reason we're doing this, I think this is how brainwashing works, right? We are trying to recruit more people. Right? NS's immediate interest, uh, I'll be honest here, is doing a postgraduate program, the STP program. Once that's done, uh, the army wants him back, right? Uh, we're not sure we are charting and trying to explore the possibility of, you know, continuing to work on this project. But um, we realize that uh, there's so much to be done. We can't do this alone, right? Which is why, I mean, we co-opted Zor all our colleagues from University of Pretoria, we are hoping that some of you people, I hope, some of you people might be interested in working on some of the obvious problems that have been highlighted, but because you are very smart people, I'm sure that you've already, just from this talk, right, you've already identified a potential problem space. And, and that's what we want, right? We are hoping that some of you, by the time we're getting towards the end of the year, you reach out to us and tell us to say, you know what, I think I'd be interested in working in this particular project you're working on to, to focus on this particular component. And some of you are interested in software development, for instance, right? Some of you might be interested in the people aspect of this. Um, some of you might be interested in the machine learning uh, part, you know, building these supervised machine learning models, maybe doing some unsupervised machine learning, you know, um, study of sorts, you know, so um, obviously we can't do everything that's been highlighted here in one year. Um, is a limit but we are hoping that more people are going to jump on board you know um, but also for things that i tagged as simple problems because i 
my, uh, if I look at my experience in computing, I think these are simple problems. What we do is we work with very smart fourth year students, right? So like implementation of the PAX platform, you don't need a master's uh, student to do that, right? You can push that to, to fourth years, which is why we've ended up with this project that, um, you know, Brighton, Andrew, uh, Vilkins, and, and uh, I think Johnny T is are working on right now. You know, so, so many moving parts. I do hope you guys uh, would consider uh, working with us. I, I know maybe what may be attractive to some of you would be the funding. Um, we can't guarantee that at the moment, but, but, but at least you'd have like a problem, right? Already carved out for you anyway. Okay, um, the, I hope that helps answer your question, Rebecca. Um, Jacob? Yes, 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 thank you. Great, thank you. Yes, Jacob accidentally uh, still had his hand raised and no questions. Okay. Sorry, um, sorry. Thank you so much. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, yes. Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, yes. So the, the question that my colleagues are asking uh, prompts me with another thing, which is, while you are doing digitalization and those modalities, it's uh, standardization of the processes and the input data that is involved. That's one thing that I've identified as... Um, one of the drawbacks with the current systems. I don't know whether that's the, which we have identified. Now, what would be the workaround on that one? Would you start with the standardization? By that, what I mean is, like the doc mentioned, that you need um, the type of capturing of images, for example, that you use uh, X-ray, is it infrared or something? And then <laughs> the data is processed. So uh, how do you deal with that standardization? Um, that's one. Then secondly, uh, you did mention about the information that is kept from uh, which that is, uh, sorry, information concerning uh, what, what I'd say is, uh, concerning the breach of security or breach of uh, confidentiality, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, from the ICT part of you. So long the information that you're going to present does not contain the bio data, then that's fine. Uh, you can process that information and store it so long it does not contain bio data, which is to e specifically identify me as Jacob from the data that you are going to store. So I think that can sort out that issue. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jacob, for that enlightenment in terms of breach of uh, <coughs> um, patient's confidentiality. Now, to answer your question on um, uh, the issue of uh, uh, your earlier question to do with the, uh, I want to believe you were trying to find out on once the, 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 the I mean like uh, bringing the information together, the data together, like standardization. Yeah, so to, 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 you know, to give a focused answer, we are not attempting to do that at the moment. Um, we realize that radiology department itself is still not organized. So it would be, you know, maybe not sincere to try and do everything at the same time, organize the radiology department and also try to integrate other imaging units into the radiology uh, uh, system. So what we want to do is to, first of all, focus on the radiology department because there are a number of, you know, problems that are are currently obtaining in the departments or in the services. I want to believe that these challenges are at UTH are also applicable in other institutions where uh, imaging is taking place. Chipata General Hospital, Livingstone, Kitwe, Ndola, they have, you know, radiology departments and I want to believe such problems do exist there. So what we need to do is to demonstrate that we can actually potentially solve some of these problems through enterprise medical imaging in the Department of Radiology before we can actually begin to assimilate uh, other image units into the, you know, into, into an AI strategy. So we will start with the uh, radiology department. If I can just write on to uh, NS uh, responses, the, the, the part where um, you highlighted the security thing, if you remember, I think uh, one of the things that Ernest, uh, I don't know how many of you 
took note of this, and, and I, this is the first time in it, by the way, I'm hearing you speak about this, is, is it intervention or examination, right? So we have to be very careful about, uh, you know, anonymizing data, biodata, right? If you're looking at doing that, um, you obviously need the demographic details of the patient, right? So, and uh, again, I'm trying to hint at the fact that uh, clearly maybe you understand security much better and perhaps you might be interested in security. You can think of um, carving out a problem, right, in that space. And I'm guessing this, most of these things are probably not new. I mean, these are probably similar things that are associated with, uh, is, is it uh, these, these um, electronic health record systems, for instance. I, I know Mshashu, is it before last year, gave a talk and this uh, question of anonymizing data came up as well. Um, and then on the part of standardization, just to also uh, add on to what Enes said here, the, the advantage we have, right, uh, will pause when it comes to people part. I mean, if you've done you know, classic information systems course, I'll tell you that an information system is made up of so many different strands, right? Uh, so you have people, procedures, you know, hardware, software, and all those things, you know, data sources. Um, I don't know if what you're referring to is the people part, but the beauty for us is from the point when, when the image is generated, um, at least we are fairly certain that the standardization issue is not so much of a problem. Why? Because fortunately for us, most of these modalities, like these X-ray machines that are used, they'll generate images of the, that, that are standards based, right? So a typical X-ray that is generated by an X-ray machine at UTH, right, has embedded metadata information within that image itself. So the patient, the referring physician, the radiographer, right? Yeah. Um, the study uh, linked to that particular image, you know, yeah. the institution, is it UTH, whatnot. And that's a good thing for us. Although what we've noticed is that if you analyze the, the, the metadata, so it's called the DICOM header, right? The standard is DICOM, you might want to look it up, by the way. When you analyze the metadata, there's still a bit of uh, iffy issues like, uh, I think because people don't appreciate the importance of providing comprehensive information, some information is, is missing from there. Like the person who, who generated the image, who is a radiographer, right? Yeah. All you have is maybe just the username associated with a computer that was used, right, to generate that image. You know, again, I'm not sure this is not so much of a serious problem if you sit down and think about it, really. It's just uh, procedures here, right? You put in place a policy and a procedure, procedure document to say this is what you do when you're generating an image. Make sure that you enter, you provide this information. You know, so, but unfortunately, I mean, if you look at the broad landscape of practices, right, best practices when it comes to people, that, that would be like an information systems type of problem. Um, if you're interested in that, I'm sure you can cover out an interesting problem. Uh, if, if, if the program allows, I'm sure you'd have to chat to Dr. Piri about this, but we've seen people or do uh, IS-centric studies, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Uh, it turns out, I don't know if you've noticed this, I'm sure as you are practicing that most problems, most of these things we're calling problems are as a direct result of human beings, right? So I don't know. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, and then there's a question from Paul. Thank you, Doc. I just wanted to find out um, from your experience with uh, working with other types of data formats like PDF, what would be the computational challenges of working with uh, uh, these uh, images? Um, I'm, I'm imagining those large sized X-ray documents would take up a, quite a number of data. What techniques would be used to actually address those uh, computational oh, no, challenges? Oh, not really, actually. Um, I've, I've forgotten, Ines, but a typical DICOM, I mean, an X-ray image is in kilobytes, right, Ines? Could be yeah, I, um, actually, an X-ray is in, in, in a few kilobytes. I think yeah. where you have, uh, maybe for example, if I do the chest X-ray and I want to look at it from the front and from the side, so I take two images, it comes to probably, um, uh, let me give another example of limbs, for example, if you have a patient who has been involved in an accident, we do what is called the trauma series, where we want to check all the long bones uh, to look for fractures. So you may take uh, left leg, right leg, left thigh, hand, the neck, the scalp. Oh, 
Right. I, uh, 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 in his, oh, we there we go. We had lost you for a second there. Um, I think Ernest is breaking. Is it just me or he's breaking? Is it? Yes, he's actually breaking. It's not audible. Yeah. That's just for extra. But for a single yeah. chest. So, where we have challenges, it's. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. So, but. Where. Yeah, yeah. Ennis, your connection is uh, is as for some weird reason. Maybe this is a sign that we should pause. I see this is nineteen hours, but your connection is is it, is intermittent, Ennis. Yeah, uh, Ennis. I don't know if you can hear me, but your connection is intermittent. So what I'm going to do is. For the last, last remaining questions, um, this recording is going to be made available. We'll try and see if we can have Ernest answer those questions. In one examination, depending on the size of the machine that we Yeah, uh, we, we just had to let him finish because I'm sure he wasn't able to okay. get us on the other side. Yeah. So, um, again, just to emphasize, I mean, some of the things are not very clear, but um, for certain types of modalities, these are, these are not very, com they're very small images, actually. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, uh, I have an example of a DICOM uh, image or something here, but maybe I do, maybe I don't, I don't know. But I wish I could showcase uh, an example of a, a DICOM image. There we go. I think I do in here. Um, it's it's not um, it's not very it's, it's not a large. Uh, he's back. Uh, I think this is an interesting conversation. I'm I'm, I'm tempted to uh, sacrifice the time that we have remaining for the class because I know people are going to be okay with us having a class, a makeup class. Um, uh, but I was hoping um, I could kind of like showcase some sample images that that I have. I don't know if you can see my my screen here. I do believe I have sample. Um, uh, these are CT scans, though. But that's um, and these are not sensitive things. I mean, we have patient details here, but we don't know what. Uh, uh, these are all CT scans. I, I, I'm wondering why I didn't. I didn't. Um, I, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, Save uh, example, but I'm just going to showcase. Uh, I mean, a typical DICOM image, right? If you can see, if you notice, right? so you could view like a single, uh, a single, a single X-ray, right? File would be like in the kilobytes. But this, of course, of course, this is. Uh, I think this is a city, right? This is from a, a city. Um, so it's not very large. So to answer your question about uh, com computational power that would be required, not a lot really. But remember, right? Depending on the type of problem you are, you are focusing on here. These would be offline models, right? So you implement a model. Um, uh, the, the, maybe the, the part that would take a lot of time is when you're training the model itself. Afterwards, you, you know, it's feeding it new observations so that you get the results is, is a process that wouldn't take that long. Um, and it's not, it's not a very complex thing here. You're working with uh, an image, right? Pixel representation, if you remember a discussion with the previous class, for instance, um, then maybe what you might want to do is in the mix, you add in, um, the DICOM header metadata, for instance, right? So it wouldn't really be that computation intensive, but what um, what what might become a bit complex is, uh, I think when you start looking at other modalities, like, uh, uh, correct me, Ennis, is, is that MRIs or CTs which will have, is it thousands of slices, right? I yes. don't know if you're still there, Ennis. Yes. Which modality is that? Yes, um, yeah, so it is actually CT scan. Um, so what, just give you an idea of uh, what this was all about. Are, are you able to get me now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Yeah, so for example, if you are scanning the brain using CT scan, um, the size of a CT scan that we have at UTH, it will kind of like slice your brain into 
thousands of slices. You know, you can, like the way you chop, you know, make slices of bread. You have your red knife and you are cutting off slices. That's exactly what the CT scan machine does. But of course, it doesn't that, do that physically. You wouldn't be alive. So what it does is that it will take images along those planes called the slices. And it can slice your brain, you know, into thousands of slices, ultra thin slices, so that you look at, no matter how small the problem is, you are able to identify it. So that's where the issue is. So it, it's like one chest x-ray, but it, ha it, it has thousands of them, thousands of, of slices. So you are looking at, when you are interpreting such an examination, you are actually going slice by slice. You are looking at each and every slice to look for abnormalities, wherever it may be. Uh, so it could be in slice number two of the series number three, just like that. So it is where the problems are, mainly it is a CT scan because it has thousands of slices. Seconded by MRI, these are also relatively big um, uh, volumes of images. Uh, for X-rays, not something to worry about. Fluoroscopy, mammography, ultrasound, these are, are, are not uh, very intensive in terms of uh, sizes of the image. Um, I, I hope that helps uh, answer that, 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 that question. Yes, it does. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, and just just to mention, right, that some of these things uh, here, you notice, I think the most interesting thing would be you carving out, um, you know, an interesting research problem, right? What you notice is that there are probably people out there that have already addressed some of these problems, but the, the, the interesting component comes in when you contextualize it within the Zambian context. I mean, we have certain unique challenges, unique problems that we need to address. You know, I'm, I'm not sure if we have such a thing, Ernest, as a... You know, unique uh, strains of maybe tuberculosis or something that we might want to to address. But there's there's ways of carving out research from this. Um, I'm mentioning this because there has to be a very clear distinction between, you know, engineering, right, which is what people in industry do, and research. If you're looking at this from the perspective of what you're supposed to be doing next year, if, however, you're looking at this from the perspective as of a business owner. An entrepreneur who would want to maybe jump into this, the opportunities. I think there are opportunities here. I mean, I don't think anybody, honest, right, in the in the country has has done this yet. The people that reached out to us are, are, are clearly from outside, just from the name, right? Yeah. They're from yeah. outside. Yeah. So there's you know, so being done locally. Yeah. You know, so the, so there's there's a couple of interesting ways of and yes, this is what I'm doing. I am trying to brainwash you, trying to recruit people to say. If you're a business owner, what better way than to work on a research problem in this area? And then at the same time, you are maybe trying to figure out how to monetize whatever it is you'll be working, uh, you'll be working on as part of your research, you know? Uh, it would be nice if we had some of you people, you know, possibly work on, on some of these problems. Unfortunately, though, for us, in any given year, we have very few people, right? And And naturally people gravitate to these other areas you're doing other interesting courses like distributed systems you know there's computer security so we understand but we are hoping that some of you will probably you know uh reach out and express an interest to work on this i, I think we can we can work towards uh making the zambian health sector much much better than it it is right now anyways um any other thoughts I'm thinking, I'm looking at the time, maybe uh, I'll just accept one more question if there's a question and then we can we can close this interaction. Um, all right. Um, if there are no questions, I mean, I just I wanted to sort of like talk about, uh, I was taking notes as Ernest was, uh, uh, was, was, was doing his presentation here and um, and uh, I just wanted to draw attention to some things that are more specific to what we are doing here, right? When it comes to data mining first, I mean, we can't do anything interesting right now because there's no data, right? Which is why one of the very first things we are doing is we are digitizing, we are conducting this uh, baseline study, right? Uh, it's a large scale baseline study, which is targeting radiographers, radiologists, um, and you know, uh, physicians in Zambia, right? general practitioners and specialists also 
you know, um, but for, for the part to do with the machine learning, right? Um, if you think about it, if you're paying attention, you will notice that uh, there's so many different uh, data mining centric aspects to look at here. The parts implementation, for instance, this is my personal favorite because, I mean, my training, my postgraduate training was in parts to do with, uh, you know, repository software tools, you know, systems like this. But uh, beyond implementing this PAX platform, um, you'd need a way, right, to automatically classify these thousands and thousands of images that are generated. I don't know, Enes, if you were to give a ballpark figure, how many x-rays would you say are generated at UTH alone on any given day? Oh, per day, uh, you talk about uh, maybe 80 to 120. There you go, right? So this is just this is just UTH, yeah. but the same thing is happening at Levy, Mwanawasa Hospital, yeah. Yeah. you know, Chipata General Hospital or something, Chipata District Hospital, you know, but these things are being automatically generated, burned on CD. If you introduce a PAX, we just mentioned that the information, right, the metadata information in there is not accurate, right? How do you classify these things? This is an X-ray, this is to do with uh, tuberculosis or something. You need an automated way, right? Machine learning comes in there, you know? You can do some large scale study to try and figure out the relative level of DACOM compliance, for instance. Um, if you're interested in the more exciting things, you can uh, look at a specific. Um, I, I keep forgetting what word you use, NS. Like, what do you refer to something like pneumonia or TB? What's the technical term? Yeah, you can look at a specific pathology, right? Yeah. To say you're interested in prostate cancer, for instance, or cervical cancer, you know, or tuberculosis, you know, and then you build a model that does that. So there's there's a lot of interesting things here. I know Zola, our colleague from the University of Pretoria, is interested in his, his, his uh, training, his postgraduate training was in ontologies and natural language generation. So he's looking at, uh, he's interested in the reports that are generated by people like Ernest. Because the report, if we have to look at the sample report, it's manually typed, right? Because it's being manually typed, are there smart ways we can use to automatically generate certain components of that report so that somebody like NS does not spend 45 minutes writing that report, but rather maybe spends less time, right? Yeah. Um, all those have like, uh, you know, uh, different implications, right? On the entire workflow. The goal here is I uh, want to make sure that uh, the client is properly served, right? The patient. Anyway, um, but there's other things, right? Uh, I mentioned information systems. I mean, there's things to do with software, right? Maybe you can do anything, uh, something interesting to do with, uh, you know, uh, a cloud-based solution, right? Just mentioned that Minas Hoka uses a, a local pass platform, right? What if we decided to go the cloud route, for instance? Uh, somebody mentioned, you know, security. You can look at the usability aspect of the tools that are being used. So you look at people there. You know, somebody like Ernest uses uh, a front-end tool called a DICOM viewer, right? You can do a study centered on that. So there's there's really quite a lot here. Um, I think it all boils down to what somebody would be interested in doing, really. Um, and with that, um, seeing as this is uh, 1920, um, I want to suggest that we can pause. Uh, we are supposed to have a class um, with the CSC 57 foot one students. I'm going to ask that we go to that class. I have a suggestion looking at the time here, but I'm open to suggestions. So we're going to close this and thank uh, uh, Dr. Zulu. Thank you so much, Ernest. Uh, really appreciate this. You, he's one of the very few people I know who is very altruistic. He's, <laughs> he always says yes when we ask him to come and give a talk, even though <laughs> there's no conversation here. But that's okay. Um, uh, <laughs> thank you, know, you so much, Ernest. Yeah, the, thank the you so much as always. Is fine. The pleasure oh, yeah. is mine, and thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and and also thanks for the um, the the people that uh, managed to attend. Uh, I know it's mandatory for the CSC seven students to attend, but we also have uh, other people from outside. Thank you so much. Um, we'll see you next week. Uh, I'll send details if Travis is coming. If he's not coming, we'll quickly find uh, a replacement. It's not hard to find speakers these days. So thank you so much for the CSC 57 foot one students. Uh, we are using the other link for the class, the normal link. I'll send it in the WhatsApp uh, group if you don't have it already. So thanks and good night. Good night. Thank you.